Hi there everyone, I uh, hope you're all keeping well. Uh, thanks for coming back to the lessons. Uh, obviously this is the third week. Uh, I'm David Harris, um, as you probably know by now. Um, so we are just going to recap a few things today and then move on with a few new exercises. Um, so first of all, uh, before we get stuck into too much, um, in terms of what we're going to go over, we probably won't go over exercises one and two, so we'll pick up from the third exercise. So if uh, anybody has anything uh, they want to say about exercises one and two, any questions, uh, please drop me a message in the chat and I will answer that. Um, and we can go back over those if anybody wants to, but otherwise, if, um, if not, we'll just push on. Uh, also, if you've had any issues with practice or anything like that, then please let me know. And again, I can just sort of pass, you know, pass on any advice or things that I think might help. Um, so as per like the previous couple of weeks, um, just want to mention there's about a 15 to 20 second delay. So hence get the questions in early and things on the chat so uh, they come through in good time. Uh, if you have emails or any social media notification type things on, please turn them off so we're nice and focused for this half an hour. Um, any children watching, if you've got your parents in the room, um, that's going to help just to kind of hopefully make sure it all makes sense to you. Um, and remember, you need to be subscribed if you want to ask any questions as well. So uh, if you're on, well, you will be on the YouTube channel, just hit the subscribe button and then you can ask away. So, uh, a few things just to check before we get started. Um, I'm just going to adjust my camera angle fractionally. Um, okay, tuning. So, we're going to start off, I'm going to play the top E string. So, just try and make sure you're in tune with this as best you can. So, here we go. Okay, so, you would just adjust uh, strings up or down with your top E string if needed. Um, so onto the B string. And then G. And D. And then A. Me. Okay, so hopefully we're all in tune. Um, remember a couple of other things, so posture. Um, if you're an aspiring classical guitarist, you'll have the guitar over the left leg uh, with the uh, uh, left leg on a footstool to raise it up a little bit. Um, for anybody else, it's okay to rest the, uh, the guitar over the right leg. Again, I'd have your right foot on a footstool or some old books or something just to kind of raise it up a little bit. Particularly if you find you're on your tiptoes on your, on, well, on either foot really, just helps to, to get us in a better position. Um, so, um, string names uh, is another thing I've got down just to recap. So, we've got E, A, D, G, B, and E. Um, so, hopefully, uh, but you're sort of more or less fine with those now. Um, the other thing I meant to mention from last week, and this is an uh, oversight on my part, when I was talking about uh, the exercises that we moved on to, so 3, 4 and 5, I didn't really make clear that G is the third string. Uh, so hopefully you did pick that up anyway. Um, but yeah, apologies for that if that wasn't clear. But anywhere where we had the note G, that was obviously uh, referring to the third string. Um, so yeah, so obviously hopefully your practice went well and, and all that kind of thing. So. Uh, what we're going to do is start with exercise three and just run through that. Um, I'll count us in, we'll play it all along together. We'll basically do the same with exercises four and five and then we'll get on to some new stuff. So, uh, without further ado, let's um, if I hold the book up. Hopefully uh, you've got your copy of Guitar Quest One. So if we turn to exercise three, um, so I'll just give you a second. I, I can't remember if I mentioned last time or not, but a very, on various pages in the book, I've got a notes section as well. So anything you need to do to scribble down, uh, you know, just any, anything that's going to help you remember notes or timing or anything like that, um, just jot away. You know, it's, it's your book, so um, scribble away as much as you need. Um, and so looking at exercise three then, 
In the first bar, we've got our four crotchets, and then in the second bar, we have the quavers. Remember, they are slightly faster notes, so we get two notes, or two, in this case, two E's in the space of one beat. So we just need to try and make sure we're picking that up. And then the last two bars, we're on, we've got the minims, so they are two beat notes. So we just want to try and make sure that we leave the space. So a good way of doing that is to sort of play the note and count two afterwards before you go on to the next one. Anyway. Let's give it a go. Uh, I should also mention, remember to try and alternate the fingers as much as you can. Um, and as I said before, don't worry too much if you find that tricky, just do as best you can with it. So here we go, exercise three after four. So one, two, three, four. And that's it. So if you played along and it all went well, give yourself a pat on the back, well done. Uh, and let's move on. So we'll turn the page, we'll come on to exercise four, uh, broken arch. So again, we're just gonna play along together and going to count us in, as you would hopefully know from practicing during the week. Uh, these same kind of notes, um, obviously G is our third string, so we wanna be introducing that. Uh, I've got in here to use the words tea and coffee to help with the timing, so um, feel free to say those as you or say those words as we play along. Um, but let's give exercise four a go. And uh, again, obviously, if you've got any questions, just um, send them through as we go. Uh, but otherwise, after four, let's uh, let's have a go. So broken arch after four. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's uh, Broken Arch. Again, if you played along and it all went well, give yourself a pat on the back. This is all good stuff. Uh, so as you can see underneath exercise four, I've got that tip just to let you know that the stems can point up or down. It doesn't change what the note is or how long it lasts for. It's just, it's just how it is. Sometimes it can be for a kind of presentation point of view. Other times it can have a more specific meaning, but that's for further down the line. Okay, so as we move on to exercise five, we have the crotchet rest to think about. So that's the one beat rest. So we'll play this one again together. And when we get to the rest, I'll say rest um, just as we go. Hopefully uh, you'll all pick that up. Um, again, any questions, fire away. Um, but otherwise, let's take it away. So courtyard busker after four. Okay, so one, two, three, Four. Rest. 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 Okay, good stuff everybody. So uh, as before, well done if you played along and um, it's always good to acknowledge, you know, uh, things that have gone well. So um, if you if, it, if that all went well, you know, I, I said give yourself a pat on the back earlier, but uh, yeah, just kind of be pleased with your progress basically. So um, this is all really good stuff. 
So, uh, we're going to move on to some new materials. So, uh, looking at the next page, I've um, got a couple more ideas um, to think about. So, the first one, as you can see in the top left corner of the page, is this note type called a semi brief. Uh, and this is just a four beat note. So, an example up at the top there, you see the notes in the top space. So, that is our note E, uh, which is our first string. So when we see the semi brief, we're going to count um, two, three, four afterwards. So a bit like the minim where we play it and we count two, now we're going to count two, three, four. As if I demonstrate, to go two, three, four. Or if you're using words to help with the timing, we can say T. So we go T, two, oh, sorry, I've cut my note off a bit there. So T, two, three, four. So the distinction we want to make with the, the semi briefs as with the minims, is we want the notes to last for the full duration. So, for example, like um, the, the E, we want it to last for four beats when it's the semi brief. If it's a minim, we want it to last for two beats. What we don't want to do is to have the feeling like a um, uh, like a rest. So we, so we don't want we don't want to hear that and then the sound disappearing. Although you may notice other noises coming out of the guitar as well, but. Effectively, we just want to try and keep these notes ringing as, as long as possible, or for the four beats at least. So, that's one idea. Um, and then the repeat mark is the other idea. So this is in the top right-hand corner of that page. Um, and you can see um, this will occur at the end of a bar usually, or, I mean, it could occur anywhere really, but um, usually it's going to be the end of a bar. And we can it's it's got the thick line, the thin line, and the two double dots. Um, so when we see that, it just means we go back to the beginning and play it all again. So if we have a look at exercise six, which is folk tale, you see um, if we look at the second bar, uh, we've got a min in there. It's on the middle line, so that's our note B. Um, and in fact, if I just um, bring the, uh, the thing up on the screen, so um, uh, yeah. Just get rid of that bit as well. So, um, probably let me just forget that. So, we've got our four E's here, just crotch it, so that's normal. Then this one, it's on the middle line, so that's our note B, that lasts for four beats. So we count two, three, four, then we've got crotch it again, then we come down here, we're on the second line from the bottom, so that's G, uh, and then two, three, four, because it's our semi brief. Then as we come onto the second line, we've got four Bs, because we're on the middle line. Uh, so that's four crotchets B there. Then we've got a couple of minims on the G. So we play the G, count two, play the G, count two. And then we come back to the Bs, four crotchets. And then we've got the E, we count two, three, four. Then we have our repeat mark here at the end of the bar, or the end of the line as well in this case. And that just tells us to go back to the beginning and we play through the whole thing again. So, um, if I just get the screen back on myself, uh, I'm going to play to you exercise six. Um, I'll play it with the repeat just so you get a feel for, for exactly what I mean. Um, and um, another thing I, I meant to mention as well was, um, what is rather, if you can avoid writing the notes the name of the notes in the book, so much the better. If you get really stuck, then, then do jot a few of them down. Um, if you write them down all the time, then um, you know, you'll know you start reading note or like the letters that you write as opposed to the, the notes on the stave. And what, where we want to try and get to is recognising the notes on the stave. Um, so sometimes like in private lessons, I uh, if, if people are struggling, I, put, I write the notes in or write a few of them in and also put question marks so that they're thinking about some of them, but not necessarily all of them. Because it's got to be a balance. We've got to get to be able to play the tune and we want to do it as best in the best way we can. So, you know, obviously that's that's over to you guys. So you just got to try and strike that balance yourselves. Um, but yeah, if you need to write a few notes in, do so, but preferably not all. So anyway, folk tale. I'll play it with the repeats. So um, I'll count us in um, anyway, in case any of you want to play along with me. 
So we go after four, so one, two, three, four. We've got B for four beats. Then our B, two, three, four, and we come again. Two, three, four, and then G, two, three, four. And B's. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, I'm just going to play the track so you know what it's going to sound like. This one ended up being quite country sounding, so it's a little bit different to the others. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, but uh, let's have a listen, see what you think. Hopefully you uh, enjoy that tune. Um, good luck with that one. Uh, I, I think it should be okay. Um, it's a different sounding tune, but um, the notes are obviously all the same, so that's all good. Uh, the other thing I, I should perhaps mention is at the end of each line, there's a little guitar fill that goes on in the, uh, in the backing track. So try not to be distracted by it. You might find you, you actually need to count, like uh, the pl or play the note. Count two, three, four. Um, but if you listen to it a few times, you'll probably get a feel for where you come back in as well. So, uh, so like I say, good luck with that. Uh, got some space for some notes down there as well, so jot away if you need to. But what we are now going to do is turn the page, and as promised last week, we're going to look at our first fretted note, uh, which is all very exciting. So, um, we've got the note A. So this is, uh, in fact, if I just put the, um, the PDF back on again. So when we turn the page, this note here is A. So when it sits in that second space from the bottom there, that is always the note A. And how we're going to play it is to push our middle finger down on the third string at the second fret, and we're going to use our second finger. So. Second finger is the middle finger, remembering our fingers are numbered, so one, two, three, and four. We don't count the thumb. And it's largely what we're going to do is think of it as being one finger per fret. So any notes at the second fret, which A is in this case, are going to be played with our middle finger. And what we want to try and do is push down close to the fret wire, and fret wire is the, the metal bit going across the strings, sort of differentiating each fret. So we push down this kind of side. So we don't want to be over here, sort of on the left hand side as you look down, assuming you're playing a right hand guitar. So we want to be on the right hand side of the fret. And the reason being is that where, when we push down, we're effectively we're shortening the string. So 
and the string is going to vibrate between this point here and the bridge over here. So to get it as clean a contact as possible, the finger needs to be here. If it's over here, you've just got a little bit too much space and you might get that kind of sound. And obviously that doesn't sound very nice, so we want to avoid that. So we come over to, to the right hand side of the fret. So looking at uh, the exercise then, um, so we have that note A, and we're just going to change between A and G. So shout if you've got any issues with getting that note to sound um, any different. Um, but for now, let's. Um, I'm just going to say I'm going to count after four, and I'd like you just all to play the note A. Okay. So after four, so one, two, three, four. Hopefully, your uh, assuming your guitars are in tune that note is going to sound exactly the same as what I just played it. So, uh, so that's cool. Now what I'd like to do is play the A followed by the G so that we can hear the difference. If I just demonstrate, so we've got A and then we play a G. Hopefully you can hear that that's a lower note. And, and this is a, a good thing. So we want to be able to differentiate. It might sound really obvious, but it, you know, it's, it's not obvious to everybody. Um, which note's higher, which note's lower. So uh, particularly when notes are close by to each other, like A and G are quite, you know, they're next door to each other, really. So A is the higher note, G is the lower note. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's effectively what we're going to be covering. So if we look at exercise seven and the mill, um, our first bar has four A's, then the second bar we move to G. We've got three G's, the last one being a minim. Then we go back to A, then we go back to G. And so really we're just changing between those, those two notes. So we're just keeping it nice and straightforward to begin with. Um, so what I'm gonna do is play it to you um, just to give you an idea of what it should sound like. Um, so um, after four, again, if you wanna join in, you're very welcome to, um, or just listen and try and get a, a feel for what's going on. So we're starting on the A, so after four, so one, two, three, four. We've got four A's, three G's, so we just lift the finger away, two, back to the A again. Notice the repeat, so we come back to the beginning. G's. Two. 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 As I said, hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, let me know, obviously, if you have any questions on that. Um, I don't think there's anything else in particular we need to be thinking about. Um, just remember the repeat. I'm just going to put the track on so you can have a listen to it. Um, and I'll point at the notes on the screen again um, for uh, so you can sort of see where it's at as we go. So I'll just bring that up, make sure yeah, we're on the right page. So let's put the tune on. And here we go.
Okay, good stuff. So, again, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy that one. A uh, little bit more jazzy than uh, the previous one, but um, all good stuff. So, uh, we've still got a few minutes, so we're going to have a quick look at number eight as well. So, Storyteller. Uh, this one, um, it's similar kind of thing. So, we've got the notes G and A. Uh, so, as before, we also bring in the note B back into the mix. Uh, so, remember, B is the note on middle line. So, in fact, if I just um, bring that screen back up again, I hope you can see that all right. So, we start on the G's here, the first bar, and then the second bar, we've got... A's and a G and then a rest. So we're going to try and incorporate that if we can. A's here and then as we come onto this bar, onto our B's. So the little zero I should have mentioned, I think I've written it, oh yeah, in the, up here, the zero before a note tells you it's an open string. So that's another little clue as to uh, what note we're playing. Uh, and we've got an A there and a rest. As we come onto the second line, we've got a series of B's and a rest and some A's and a rest. And then B's, A's and G's. So, uh, as before, I'm just going to play it to you. Uh, I'll play it with the repeat and then we'll have a listen to the tune in just a second. So, uh, if you'd like to join in, please do so. Um, so, after four, so one, two, three, four. I'm just going to put the track on just so you can have a quick listen to that as well. Uh, so here we go. Size eight, uh, and so that is a good place for us to finish up, I think, for today. So, what we need to practice for next time, then, uh, what I would suggest is you pick, or well, actually, we'll pick one now, um, but something is a bit of a warm up. Um, so, when you pick the guitar up, you go to do your practice rather than just going straight in with the new stuff, which you might probably, well, I'd expect you find a little bit more difficult. Um, go with something easy. So I was going to suggest we start with um, number four, Broken Arch, as a bit of a warm-up. Um, so just play through that, refresh the notes, um, get the fingers moving, that kind of thing. And then in terms of practice, we want to practice exercises six, seven and eight. Uh, and remember, on those three in particular, uh, practice it on your own first. Um, just trying to make sure you're getting the notes uh, correct, get the timing correct. Uh, then try playing along with the backing tracks, which I've put on YouTube. 
fact, I've only got up to number six on. I'll, I'll pop the other two on shortly, but obviously they're on this video as well, which will get uploaded shortly. Um, so yeah, um, and then once you are confident, you can play along with the, the demo track, then go to the, the backing track, um, which obviously has the me playing the guitar part removed, and so it's just over to you guys. Um, and I think I mentioned sometimes I use the word backing track and full track or demo track. I, I kind of muddle those terms a little bit, so apologies about that. But when I'm playing with you, it's the demo track, and when you're playing it on your own, it's the backing track. Um, so do the demo track, get comfortable with it, and then do the backing track. Um, and I think that is pretty much it. I've got some notes here, so if you see me looking over to the, my right here, that's just uh, me checking what else needs to be talked about. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, uh, this live stream will get uploaded to YouTube. Um, it goes up pretty quickly, um, so feel free to watch that back. Uh, backing tracks will be on YouTube very shortly as well. Uh, next week, um, so we'll recap some of this stuff. We're also going to look at our first chord, which is going to be E minor. So that'll be something uh, worthwhile getting stuck into. Uh, it's a good one, and it's also le learning chords. Um, it's really good for checking your tuning. And so, but we'll, we'll go into that next week as well. Um, so what else have we got here? Um, that is pretty much it, actually. So if you enjoyed the lesson, please give it a thumbs up. Um, I haven't seen any questions come through, so we'll probably just finish up. But obviously, if you've got any comments, please uh, send them through. Um, if you haven't made a donation, um, if you can do, that would be amazing. Um, and then in terms of next week's lesson, which will obviously be week four, I'll send the email around. Just Usually, I'll just send it on Thursday morning uh, with the link. But I do set the live stream, uh, I do schedule it in advance. So, uh, you know, if you go to my YouTube homepage, you'll see it there anyway. And if you click on it, it'll probably just say, you know, it'll be starting in five days or whatever it is. Um, so uh, if for any reason you don't see the email, just go to that. I have also been putting it on my Facebook page when I remember to. Um, so you can always check that out as well. Um, but yeah. I think we'll finish up there, so if you've got any questions, please uh, chuck them in the chat and I'll, I'll sit here for another couple of minutes, um, but otherwise if not, I will look forward to seeing you all next week. So thanks for joining and see you soon, bye bye.